What if the edge of our solar system is only the beginning, not the end, of something more bizarre? After decades of silence, the Voyagers arrived in a so-called up that NASA was shocked by as well. What Voyager learned out there changes what we believed space could be. In late 2023, Voyager 1, the first human-made spacecraft ever, began transmitting data that made no sense. The signs were there for weeks, signals were shattered and muddled. There was no comprehensible information and the initial thought of experts was that a part was busted. After looking closer, they discovered a real issue, a mistaken space in the spacecraft's system for memory. A tiny chip probably got zapped by space radiation. Without an atmosphere, spacecraft get hit by extremely powerful particles. These atoms have the ability to rip wires apart, flip memory bits, and mess up data. Voyager 1 still sent signals, but nothing came close to what was required. The only fix was to redo the main data system from a distance of over 15 billion miles, something it was never intended to do. Yet, a signal emerged after weeks of silence and tests. It came through. The data was clear, structured, and logical. NASA stated Voyager 1 reset its system using remote instructions, and a small spacecraft memory solved a major issue with no room for mistakes. It did a procedure that no spacecraft was constructed to attempt, and it worked. This is the record of a mission that wasn't meant to last. It began in 1977 with a single launch expected to last five years. Two similar launches of spacecraft were scheduled, called the first and second Voyagers. Their twin probes built by NASA and had less computing power than a basic calculator. The mission was regarded as insignificant, visit the outer planets, collect information and pictures, and wrap up in a few years. Voyager 2 launched first on August 20, 1977, with Voyager 1 following on September 5, 1977. The path depended on a rare planetary lineup that happens once every 176 years. This allowed the spacecraft to bounce from one gas giant to another using gravity, which cut down travel time. Seeing past Saturn was considered a distant dream. The probes had no backup solar panels, no AI, and no processors. Each used a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, a nuclear battery that faded over time, giving just enough power to send small data bursts back to Earth. Voyager 1 got to Jupiter in 1979. It took detailed pictures of storms, strong radiation areas, and the planet's massive magnetic field. Jupiter was more than a big gas ball. It proved to be dangerous with radiation that could destroy spacecraft within hours. But Voyager 1 achieved success and delivered discoveries. It discovered large, weak magnetic fields, rings, and plasma waves never seen before. Also, it spotted something odd. Jupiter's moon Io was covered in active volcanoes. Voyager also revealed more information about Saturn's rings. There were braided rings, gaps, and moon-shaped patterns. As Voyager 1 went toward deep space, Voyager 2 kept going. In January 1986, it got to Uranus. Uranus was distinct from other planets. It was slanted to one side, turning like a ball. Its electric field was twisted in a manner unlike any other before. Strangely, Voyager to found ten new moons, fields of magnetism, and a planet whose attributes defied notions. It also discovered thin, gloomy rings that were nearly invisible. Voyager to visited Neptune in 1989. It was the final stop and presented a wide range of crazy weather. The wind blew faster than sound and big storms spun on its surface. It sent more than 9,000 images, displaying a wild environment with winds and storms as it passed Neptune's moon Triton. Triton was covered in frozen nitrogen with liquid-spitting geysers. Nitrogen in the air had previously frozen, falling to the ground. The surface appeared young and had few craters. The data from Uranus and Neptune was new and the last humans have ever gotten. No other mission has been revisited, so everything captured by Voyager 2 became valuable. The region where the sun's light fades and space behaves in different ways, what began as a five-year planet checkup became the longest mission ever to orbit and beyond the solar system's outer limits. At some point, the planets vanished. 
No next stop, no moons to shoot. Voyager 1 passed Neptune's orbit and kept going. However, the void turned out to be interesting because the solar system's edge isn't a clean line. It's bizarre, and it had never been seen before. That slant is the heliosphere, like an invisible bubble blown by the solar wind. The solar wind travels fast, but it hits material composed of gas, dust, fields, and radiation that repels. Voyager 1 was about to hit it. Scientists guessed what the boundary might look like a gradient or a wall. No one knew because no probe had gone that far. For years, scientists didn't know when or if the spacecraft would cross. The sun's sphere extends beyond Pluto and no one was sure where it vanished into the void. But things changed in 2012. Plasma density went up, fields changed direction, and particles disappeared. Voyager 1 was outside, the first human-made thing to leave the solar system. Six years later, Voyager 2 followed. Nevertheless, they did not encounter the same things. Voyager 1 entered a region where particles and interstellar space were dense, like walls. Voyager 2 found a flow of particles reaching far. Similar exit, different entrances. Voyager 1 no longer had its plasma device, whereas Voyager 2 had one. It recognized that the plasma was warmer than anticipated, nearly 30,000. But because the medium was thin, it seemed cool to the probe. Both voyagers recorded something else. The sun pushed at the bubble's exterior. The movement of these folds they fled from the probes. Everything the scientists had seen was incorrect. Everything they were aware of about the sun's system edge broke down. Something was distinct, and it became more bizarre. The golden record, prior to Voyager's departure, engineers added a 12-inch solar system disk in a case made of aluminum, like a peaceful signature. On August 20, 1977, Voyager 2 was the first to go live, followed 116 days later by Voyager 1. The path was contingent on a rare alignment of the planets every 176 years. The spacecraft was able to make use of gravitational assists, moving from one gas giant to another, reducing travel time significantly. NASA was aware that this was a tiny window and profited from it. Survival past Saturn was thought to be unlikely. The probes lacked AI, backup CPUs, or solar panels. Each used a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, a nuclear battery that slowly lost power, supplying sufficient energy to return data to Earth. These battery packs convert the heat from radioactive decay into electrical energy, albeit slowly a steady flow that can last for decades. Voyager 1 reached Jupiter in 1979. It captured high-resolution images of radiation's zones, storms, and the planet's magnetic field. Jupiter was a dangerous world, surrounded by radiation that could damage spacecraft in a hurry. But Voyager 1 made it through and not only survived, but also came across new things. It discovered faint rings, strong magnetic fields, and plasma waves. It also spotted something unexpected. One of Jupiter's moons, Io, which was believed to be dead, was dotted with erupting volcanoes, some bursting with sufficient force to send substance into space. The rings of Saturn were seen by Voyager in detail, showing braided rings, gaps, and patterns shaped by hidden moons. As Voyager 1 entered deep space, Voyager 2 continued its mission. In January 1986, it reached Uranus, the only time this planet has been visited by a spacecraft. Uranus was on its side, turning into a ball. Its magnetic field was twisted and different from anything seen previously. Voyager 2 discovered and identified 10 new moons, odd magnetic fields, and demonstrated that Uranus was unlike any other planet. It also discovered thin, dark ringlets that were difficult to see. Voyager 2 reached its final destination, Neptune, in 1989 and learned of violent weather. The winds changed, huge storms spun faster than sound over the surface. It sent over 9,000 images showing a changing atmosphere with storms and exceedingly high winds. Passing Triton, Neptune's moon, the probe gathered data that changed common assumptions. The nitrogen was frozen over Triton, with liquid nitrogen being released by geysers into the frozen air before it struck the surface. 
The surface appeared new, with few craters and evidence of activity. The information from Uranus and Neptune was new, and the last we've received, as no other mission has returned. Thus, everything Voyager to captured gained value. At a location where SpaceX takes action as the sun sets differently, what started as a five-year mission became the longest-running space mission in history going beyond Saturn to the solar system's outermost reaches. The heliosphere, the bubble of space shaped by the sun, at some point the planets finished without a destination and no moons to photograph. When Voyager 1 reached the orbit of Neptune, it continued on, but nothing came of it. The most fascinating component of the mission was the solar system's edge, which has no straight line. It's messy and bizarre. That slant is the heliosphere. Think of it as a huge bubble being blown by the sun's breeze. Streams of charged rays from the sun's surface wind from the sun, travel far but eventually hit the interstellar medium, which consists of gas, dust, magnetic fields, and radiation, and retaliates. Voyager 1 was about to collide with it. Researchers had pondered what that boundary would be like whether the wall was hard or soft. No one knew because no investigation had reached that far. The majority of ideas were computer-based models. Researchers were unsure when, or if, that line would be crossed by the spacecraft. The sun's magnetic field has a wide range beyond Pluto and no one was sure where it faded into deep space. However, in 2012, the data started to change. The plasma density spiked, magnetic fields shifted, and charged particles decreased. Voyager 1 was outside and became the first human-made object to leave the solar system. Six years later, Voyager 2 observed various things. Though their data did not correspond, Voyager 1 entered a region where the interstellar dust was thick, like energy walls, while Voyager 2 found a stream of particles that reached deep into the heliosphere. They exited the solar system through to distinct entrances. But that wasn't the only surprise. Voyager 1 had lost its plasma equipment. Particles could be detected, but not their temperature or velocity. Voyager to still had a working sensor, and what it saw astonished scientists. Beyond the solar system, the plasma was much hotter than anticipated, nearly 30 zero degrees Celsius. However, due to the medium's thinness, it didn't feel hot to the probe. Both Voyagers recorded something else that was not anticipated. The border of the heliosphere was uneven, it was wrinkled. Space's immense folds, brought about by the sun's energy pushing and pulling at the edge of the bubble, shifted and moved. They should have been empty, resulting in increased noise and chaos. The scientists' creations were wrong. Everything they knew about the solar system's outer edge was shattered. Additionally, something was different outside. 